Hey guys, good morning. Welcome to DC Kids Online. We are so excited yes. that you have chosen to join with us today. Next week. Next week. Next week, so we exciting. will be back in house in DC yes, Kids. together. Kicking it back off next week. We are, I'm so excited. Like, it I'm feels like it's super been super excited. Forever. I cannot wait. I can't wait to see yes. all of our DC Kids smiling faces live in person. That's right. And we're going to have some more info coming to you guys later on this week about exactly what that's going to yes. look like, how you're going to enter the campus in each building and each age group as well. That's right. I'm, I'm super pumped yes. about so that. So let's get started with some rules. All right. So rule number one, when someone is speaking, you are... Listening. Listening. Very so good. Good, good. Job. good And job. number two is share with an adult. Remember, sometime throughout the day today, share something that you learned yes. from this week's message with an adult. That's right. And rule number three, it's normally number five, but My you favorite. know it. Here we go. One, two, three. Have, Have fun. fun. All right, we are in the last week of our series, But You're Just a Kid. And we've talked about some amazing Bible characters in the last few weeks. Yeah, we've learned about David, we've learned about Miriam, yep. and she was Moses' sister. Right, right. And in last week we talked about Josiah and how Josiah became king at just eight wow, that's years old. Old. That's amazing. And we saw last week that even a kid right. can be a leader. leader. And right. so today we're going to talk about a kid that's actually nameless. Nobody even knows this kid's nobody. name. This is one of my favorite stories in yeah. the Bible, but nobody knows this kid's nobody. name. Now, nameless. today's story is about the kid that gave his entire lunch to Jesus. Do you know how many kids would really probably <laughs> share their lunch? Yeah, not very many. Most kids like to take each other's lunch, yeah. not share their own lunch. I, I don't even like to share my lunch. Yeah, I don't uh, either most I, I of the don't, time. <laughs> I don't like to share my lunch either. But this kid gave his entire That's lunch right. to Jesus, and Jesus blessed it. And the Bible says he fed over 5,000 wow. men, plus 5, women and children. That's a crazy. lot of people think that it was close to 10,000 right. people that is crazy. Uh, when they add up everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we're going to look at that story today. But right now, let's get into some praise and worship. I'm you ready? so ready. All right, here, here we go. go.
in life like this. All I have is a hope and a wish. Nothing to work compared to this. Eyes closed, I'm walking. I now know what fate is. Trust it, but leave it. My hands up. I'm dancing. Hit the beat, yes, hit the beat. Make a trust with us because you believe. That's right, you're like me. Yeah, let's see. Let's start up the party. Example for the believer. 
believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. 1 Timothy 4, 12. All right, boys, it's your turn. I want you to stand up wherever you are and say it with me. One, two, three. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. But set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. 1 Timothy 4, 12. All right, girls, I think you can do way better than them stinky boys. Stand on up. Here we go. One, two, three. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. But set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. 1 Timothy 4, 12. Man, that was good, but guess what? I bet you're wondering why I got this old trophy here and this old kickball here. Well, guess what? You remember how yesterday, or not yesterday, or a couple days before, oh no, sorry, it's like week before, it was that menorial day? But wait, I don't know really why they call it menorial day because it got nothing to do with no minnows. But anyway, we had a family kickball tournament, and guess who was the winner? Oh wait, I'm not gonna tell you yet. Let me just tell you what happened. It came down to the winning kick, and guess whose turn it was? Maybelline. Man, you're a good guesser. Okay, so I got up there and got ready to kick. Well, guess what? Oh, Uncle Billy said, Maybelline, you are too little to kick that ball over that bitch, and we ain't gonna get the win point. I said, you better just wait a minute, Uncle Billy. I'll kick this ball way over that fence. So guess what I did? I got set up. I put the ball down. I got ready and I gave it the biggest kick I ever got. You know what? It hurt real bad, because guess what? My toes is purple. It hurt. It bruised my toes. I hurt real bad. So guess what happened with the ball? It hit Cousin Billy in the head. There comes Aunt Billy taking care of Cousin Billy, and Uncle Billy wasn't paying no attention. So I took off Lord's face as I could, and I got all the way to home plate and score. I was the winner of the kickball game. Now, don't let nobody tell you you're too little, especially in the kickball game. If Maybelline can do it, you can do it too. What? Oh wait, hold on a minute. They're calling me for another game. It's winter's time. See you later. Stories of the Bible. Jesus feeds the 5,000. This is Jesus. hey -oh. Who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love. He did many miracles and healed people of their sickness. Oh, hey, everyone. A huge crowd kept following him wherever he went because they saw his miraculous signs as he healed the sick. A crowd started to gather around Jesus. There were 5,000 men and many more women and children. Turning to Philip, he asked, Hey, Philip! Where can we buy bread to feed all these people? You see, Jesus was testing Philip, for he already knew what he was going to do. Um. Philip replied, Even if we worked for months, we wouldn't have enough money to feed them. Hey, I got an idea. Then Andrew spoke up. There's a young boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. But what good is that with this huge crowd? Jesus said, tell everyone to sit down. Back, everyone, sit down. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks to God, and gave them to the people. Here you go. Afterward, he did the same with the fish, and they all ate as much as they wanted. Want some more? I'm all good, thanks. After everyone was full, Jesus told his disciples, Now gather the leftovers, 
so that nothing is wasted. You got it. So they picked up the pieces and filled 12 baskets with scraps left by the people who had eaten from the five barley loaves and two fish. Hey guys, so right now we're going to jump into the main part of our message today, but you're just a kid. Now that's a phrase that gets tossed around a lot, doesn't it? It means that basically you're too young or you're too inexperienced or you're too small to do certain things. Now for the last few weeks, we've seen that kids can do much more than adults give them credit for sometimes. The Bible is filled with tales of kids doing amazing things. <clears throat> These kids we've looked at in this series were able to do great things because they had one thing in common. You know what it is? They gave everything to God. They turned to God. They gave all that they had to Him and they let Him use them. They gave what they had, even though it might have been small, they gave it to Him and He used it and did big things. Just like our story today, we see that the young boy had something that Jesus and the disciples needed because they had all of these people and they didn't have any food and they definitely didn't have enough money to go buy food. And so this little boy gives up his lunch. Now, it, it, it doesn't say much about the boy. It doesn't tell us his name. It doesn't tell us where he come from. All it says is that he brought his lunch and, and he had five loaves of bread, small pieces of bread, and then two fish. And so he gave everything to Jesus. Now he could have said, all right, I'll give you half of it, but I won't, I've got to get mine, right? He could have given part of it to Jesus. He could have given uh, a third of it to Jesus, but no, he gave it all to Jesus. And in our story that we just watched, it says that everybody, there was 5,000 men plus women and children. So almost 10,000 people were fed off of this miracle that Jesus did. And so it said that everybody had as much as they wanted. So if they wanted seconds, they got seconds. If they wanted thirds, guess what? They got thirds. And so the boy was probably able to eat more than what he even brought for himself if he would have kept it to himself. You see, he didn't have much to give, but what he did is he gave it all. Everybody say all. That's right. He gave it all to Jesus. And because of that, even though his gift was small, Jesus turned it into something big. At the end of the story, we saw that they had so much food left over that they collected 12 baskets full of food left over. Everybody was full and they still had 12 baskets left over. How awesome is God that he can take our small gift, our small thing that we have, and turn it and use it into something big. You see, each of us, young, old, big, small, we all have something to offer. It's different for everyone. Every, everyone can do something different. Everyone is blessed with a different gift or a different ability, a different talent. Some of you may be good singers. Some of us may have the talent of hospitality, which means it, being friendly and making people feel welcome. Some people have the gift of being able to speak in front of others and tell people about Jesus. Regardless of your gift, though, God can use your gift. You might think that what you have to offer isn't much, but that's okay. The boy didn't have a lot to offer either, but he gave it all to Jesus. You may not have, uh, in your mind, a lot to offer, but if you'll just give it all to Jesus and let, let God take that little bit and make it huge and make it and use it to be to do big things and to be big things the boy didn't have a lot he didn't have a lot of food but he gave it all to Jesus gladly it was Jesus who made it into something great if you offer up your time if you offer up your talents and if you offer up your stuff to Jesus he will do the same thing he will do great things with you and through you much more than you can ever do alone, much more than I can ever do alone. You see, God gave you those gifts and He wants you to use them. And yeah, you can do certain things on your own, but until you give it all to Jesus, until you give it all to Him, they'll still be small things. But just like in our story today, once you give it all to God, once you give it all to Jesus, He'll take them and He will use them to do big, big things, things that could even blow your mind. 
So I want to pray for you today. And I want to encourage you that uh, whatever it is that God's blessed you with, whatever talent, whatever gift, whatever ability that God has blessed you with, I want to encourage you today to give it all to Him. Let's pray. God, I just thank you so much for your grace and your mercy. God, thank you for your word today. God, thank you that, first of all, you have given us talents, you have given us gifts, you have given us abilities to use, to, to tell others about Jesus, to be a witness, to, to sing your praises, God, whatever our gifts and talents are. God, help us to use them to honor and to glorify you. But God, not only for us to use them to honor you and to glorify you, God, but also... God, help us to give those to you willingly so that you can take what is small and what seems maybe insignificant and you can take it and use it for big, big things. So God, I just thank you and I pray for each and every kid that's watching, each and every parent that's watching today, God. I pray that you would bless them today. God, we love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Good job. I love you guys. You guys are awesome. Hey, next week, June the 7th, we're going to be back in house so make sure that you tell your parents to bring you in to uh, DC kids we're gonna have social distancing going on of course and we're gonna take good care of you and so make sure that you tell your parents you're ready to get back into church it's time okay so I cannot wait to see you guys next week I love you have an amazing week